Hello everybody, this is Bob here, just showing you my latest uh, magnetic motor configuration. Right now I'm just doing some tests to see where I can um, basically, how far I can get in the rotation. What I got here is about 450 nickel size magnets put together in stacks going around the stator. I start off small one beside slightly bigger slightly bigger getting bigger and bigger all the way around the circle until I get to around these big guys which is about 50 magnets here and about uh, 45 there and uh, I got a couple on the rotor I'm using that 20 pound uh, flywheel heavy rotor weight off an exercise bike I got these, it, this is a traction mode, and uh, I wanted to see at what point it starts to take off by itself and goes to the strongest zone, and where that zone would actually lie. Will, will it end here? Will it end back here? Will it go to here, then bounce back? And uh, at a certain speed, will it break the uh, cogging point at the strongest magnet? Or where is the stopping point? So, you always have a neutral zone where it's in between. I cause it quasi motor land. And right here, it wants to be pulled back because it's closer to the bigger magnet. But right here, it is quasi motor land. Right, right about there. Now, it's being pulled forward. So it does uh, about 75% rotation and bounces back. Where does, it, where does it stop? Well, I know. It's uh, very interesting. You might think it would stop at the strongest magnet. And uh, it doesn't. It stops at the 75% point approximately here. Why does it do that? Well, it's the law of averages. All these magnets here equals up to all these magnets here. So this is the 50% magnetic zone. So it's a sum of the magnetism divided by two, or in other words, the middle of the magnetism. I tried to break that by uh, cutting my steel uh, flux transferal unit here, basically a basket, garbage bale basket, by severing it here. I thought by doing that, I would have a definite beginning and a definite end, but it makes no difference. Still at the 75% zone, or 50% magnetic wise, but 75% through the rotation. Now, attraction is funny. It's really an, a, a passive thing. You can have two magnets very similar. One will be slightly larger than the other, and it'll hesitate. It'll say, shall I stay or should I go? Shall I stay? I like it here. Or should I go over there? Hmm, hmm. And it, it's, it's like it's making up its mind. So it's passive. And then it makes a decision. And my next test after this video will be repulsion. I suspect that will not be so passive. It will know instantaneously where it's going to go. It's like an angry, aggressive nature with repulsion. See, where's that zone? Where's that, where's that zone that I want to be attracted to? Where is it? Wait for it. I've done this many times, and it's always the same spot. But by dividing the bucket up, like right here at the beginning, I've uh, 
have a definite end, definite end uh, and beginning to it. Otherwise, you would have more of a variation as the flux rotates in, in, inside the circle, bouncing around the uh, tin barrier here. So I do have a definite end to it. It helps a little bit, so it's more definitive, but it always finds it. Now, in reverse, going from the large magnet to the smaller magnet, it works a lot easier. Although it's not being pulled by the magnets this way, counterclockwise, it is actually not uh, having such a gate. So there's no cog. Right here, there's a cog where it comes here and bounces back because if it's attracted to the stronger magnets as it goes past this gate. But now, it's since it's in attraction it's passive so it says okay you're a little weaker over here but i'll go visit you anyways and when it does that it, it comes to the big guy so it's very interesting the reason i'm doing this is just to determine whether i'm going to use propulsion or attraction and what sort of configuration i'll be using i'll probably keep this configuration and i'm going to have to uh, screw it all down make it better uh, because uh, otherwise the, every second magnet was going to fly right off in repulsion mode. Anyways, that's it for now. It's just interesting how this 20-pound rotor turns so easily with just a few magnets when it's at its happy place. Yeah. Okay, that's it for now. Take care, my friends.